I live in a little town in the south, where up until this spring I was convinced was the most boring place in the world. Maybe that's just my dramatic teenage take, but nothing ever happens here. Our most interesting events came when there was a particularly bad batch of meth, or good I guess, and some tweaker would hurl an alligator into the Wendy's drive through window when they fucked up his frosty. This may seem like an interesting event to some, but I was embarrassed by my hometown. Our town pride was a fullback for the Razorbacks who was set to break the SEC single season rushing record in the 80s, until he tried to crack a keg open on his forehead. Legend has it that it did crack along with his skull, and while Duke Wilson may have died of a brain bleed, that keg lives on hanging high at the sports bar on Main. I could continue, but I suppose you've got the picture of where I live. Anyway, when two of my friends from school went missing, I was sorry I always wished something interesting would happen. This wasn't what I meant. High schoolers go missing from my town often. I know that seems strange, but missing is not quite as nefarious as it sounds. What missing means here is that the kids who barely went to class in the first place skipped town to do drugs somewhere else. But Jessica and Anthony were not those kind of kids. They were going to get out of here, not to some drug den and mobile, but to college. That didn't stop the local and state police from treating their disappearances like every other one from our town. They acted like Jess and Anthony were just some druggy kids who ran off like the rest. Some of Jessica's friends and I went over to her parents' house when they first reported her missing. The police had shown up to file the report and we heard the end of an argument. Jessica was going to go to Juilliard, her mom shouted. Well, you know them music types, said the sheriff. That was about the extent of the investigation. The next day at school, there wasn't even an assembly. The general consensus was, Huh, didn't know those kids did drugs too. I was staring at where Jessica and Anthony would sit at our cafeteria table when a pile of textbooks slammed in front of me. I flinched and Megan jumped into Jessica's spot. Kate, she put her hands on my knees. I think I know where Jess and Anthony might be. Now, how can I describe Megan? The first thing that comes to mind now is backstabbing bitch, but of course, I did not know this then. Megan was stuck in the 2000s. Her music, her clothes, all of it. She was sequined and smelled like the mall, which always confused me since the nearest one was 50 miles away. Somehow, every compliment she made was simultaneously an insult and every story you told, she instantly one-upped. She was friends with Jess, Anthony and I because by our calculations, we were the most popular group that would be nice to her. She was always looking to move up the social ladder and would follow in the periphery of the popular kids like a pile of fish until they shooed her away. I actually felt bad for her then. It's hard seeing someone try to be someone they can't. Listen. Megan lowered her voice and looked into my eyes. Jess and Anthony were talking the other day about going into the woods behind the old bakery after school. What? I knew Jess and Anthony weren't the adventure type, and those woods were only used for smoking pot. Why would they go into the woods? Megan had not expected this question and frowned. Um, they said something about a swimming hole. Did you tell the police? Of course not, they would never check it out. She was right about this, but something felt fake. Although I couldn't be sure it wasn't just Megan's sham personality, my spidey senses were picking up on. So I was thinking something happened to them there. Maybe they found it and drowned. Or maybe... Megan paused. Maybe they went into the caves. She was referring to any number of limestone caves that were scattered through the woods outside our small town. There was nothing very interesting about them. Kids used to play in the caves all the time, until in the early 2000s, some boys playing a game called Bin Laden threw smoke bombs into one and suffocated one of their friends. 
Megan wasn't very smart, which is the embarrassing part of this story. Nevertheless, I had to do something to help find my friends, and without any better leads, I agreed to go with her into the woods on Saturday morning. I packed granola bars, Gatorades, and donned my fanny pack first aid kit before meeting Megan behind the bakery at 10 a.m. When I got there, I saw that she didn't have a backpack or supplies of any kind. Are you trying to end up missing yourself? I teased. No, she looked at me nervously. You're already Betty. I knew you'd bring stuff. I nodded and stood next to her. But she looked over her shoulder. I did bring some pot. How's that going to help us? Megan shrugged. In front of us, multiple trailheads webbed out into the woods. Are we ready? Megan asked, and before I answered, she confidently took the trail that branched off furthest to our left. While we walked, I was trying to survey the grounds for any signs that my friends had been there, but Megan was walking too quickly. Hey, there's no way I'd be able to catch a trace of them, Megan. We're walking too fast. Don't worry, she was breathing heavily. We're almost there. Where? A brief panic shone on her face. Uh, the first cave. Have you been here before? Yeah, like sophomore year, we had a bonfire way out here. I raised my eyebrows and walked on, and not much later, Megan stopped at the edge of the trail where an oak grew, with an X burned into its bark. It's just past here, she said. Okay, but shouldn't we search the caves that are easiest to get to first? Why would Jess and Anthony stomp around the bramble in this exact spot? Megan turned and snapped. Just trust me, okay? Why does nobody fucking trust me? Because people have an innate ability to sniff out selfish people. I wish I said this, but I held my tongue. If I was a less passive person, I would have gone my own way. But I said nothing and followed as she stepped off the trail. Just as I began to worry that we were going too far to find our way back to the trail easily, a mouth of black appeared. The cave opening stood at the base of a small bluff. This one! This is the cave! Megan suddenly gasped and pointed. In the splintered shale that littered the mouth of the cave was a shirt. That's Jess's shirt! She looked at me with an exaggerated expression of shock. I frowned back at her incredulously. Okay, Megan, how do you know how to come here? What do you mean? There's hundreds of acres back here and you make a beeline to this cave where Jess's shirt is? What's going on? She started chewing her lip. It was more than several seconds before she spoke and I was determined not to break the silence first. Okay, she flared both her hands. Me and Anthony and Jess were all here the other day. Don't get mad at me, but they wanted to try weed. I knew you wouldn't approve of me getting them high, so we came just the three of us. Megan took a deep breath and looked around as if she might find clues in the woods on how to finish the rest of her story. So we all get high, right? And they wanted to explore the cave, and I didn't. They went in and never came out. I was too afraid to go in after them. I thought they were pranking me and when they didn't come out after an hour, I left. I sighed. Why didn't you tell anyone? It's been days. They could be dead. I'm sorry, I was afraid. Everyone would know we were out here to smoke and I'd be busted. Jesus Christ, Megan. So... Megan pointed at the cave. Do you want to go in? Absolutely not, but I will. Oh, she smiled. Great. The temperature was already in the 90s, and I threw open my backpack and chugged a Gatorade. When I was finished, I stared at the mouth of the cave and ate a granola bar, contemplating the black. So they never came out? Did you try yelling into it? Of course, no one responded. Oh, and... Megan's eyes lit up. I didn't have a flashlight. How would I ever begin to find them in there if I didn't have a flashlight? 
I pulled my flashlight from the bag and threw the backpack on. Okay, let's go. You first. I figured. Inside smelled of wet stone and the sunlight seemed to deaden after only a few steps in. The ceiling was high enough to stand straight, but there was no graffiti on the walls, not even carved hearts. I should have known something was wrong then, but the moment I felt fear, my mouth opened and I yelled. Jessica? Anthony, are you in here? We stayed still, waiting for a response, and when none came, crept forward. Thankfully, the cave didn't branch off in a million directions. It was a single pipe and I wasn't worried about getting lost. It wasn't more than 100 small paces that we reached the end, but by then the only visible light was from my flashlight. I don't think they're here, Megan. But what's that? She was talking about a crude star-shaped hole in the end of the cave that stood at waist height. That's a hole, Megan. Well, they could have crawled in there. Why on earth would they ever do that? I walked forward and bent over. The edges of the hole were scarred with tool markings, and when I looked at my feet, there was a small pile of debris. Someone had made this hole many years ago. I kicked at the shards of stone and shined my flashlight in. It was like the cave continued but only in miniature form at shoulder width. Cool air poured out of the hole with a dank smell to it. But it wasn't the sweet smell of stone. There was something rotten in the air. Crawling through this thing is quite possibly the last thing on earth a high person would ever do, Megan. That doesn't mean they're not in there. Suddenly Megan's head was next to mine and she shouted into the hole. Jessica! Anthony! Are you in there? I turned to look at her dumbly, but then I heard it. A faint voice. Too late and too deep to be an echo of Megan. I almost wanted to ignore it. My heart began to race and I fumbled the flashlight. Did you hear that? That was Anthony! Anthony! Are you in there? The distant voice came again, but clearer, as if it had moved to better shout down the tunnel. Yes, please come quick and help us. Megan took a deep breath to shout again, but I cut her off. Anthony, it's Kate. I'm going to go get help. No, he shrieked back. There's no time, Jess, Jess is bleeding. We have to do something, Megan hissed. I'm not going in there. But even as I said it, I knew I was going to. Come on, you have a first aid kit. Anthony has survived in there for days, and if he could fit through the tunnel, you can too. Please, Kate, I can go get help. I closed my eyes and shrugged my backpack off. And I don't suppose you want to go in with my first aid kit yourself. What? Kate, you're like way skinnier than me. Seriously, it's amazing. Megan paused and raised a single eyebrow. You're like a skeleton. I looked down at my body and then at Megan. I shook my head and got to work. The hardest part was wiggling into the tunnel. I set the flashlight in my teeth and scrunched my shoulders and tucked my head. I had to pull my entire weight forward with just my elbows, but it wasn't long before I was in. Okay, Anthony, I'm coming and Megan's getting help. There was no response. If I had to guess, the tunnel wasn't more than a foot high and just an inch wider than my shoulders. The hardest part was breathing. Not only was the air sickening and sour, but every time I pulled myself forward, I'd get stuck for a second before I figured out what part of myself to wiggle free. I'd panic and my heart would race, but deep breathing was impossible. I could barely expand my ribcage and was reduced to short, shallow breaths. I had no sense of how far I'd gone since it was impossible to look behind me. But the next thing I remembered was stopping after only a few minutes, when I heard Anthony's voice. Kate, are you coming? The voice was clearer, so I knew I was getting closer. The only problem was that it was definitely not Anthony's voice. 
or Jess's. I froze. I didn't say anything back. Kate, I see your light. Are you coming? The voice had a hollowness to it that didn't even sound human. How had I been fooled before? This voice sounded nothing like Anthony. Maybe the tunnel distorted sound? Maybe my brain had just wanted to hear Anthony because the idea of something else living in the darkness was too horrifying to comprehend. I started struggling backwards. Uh, yeah, I'm coming, Anthony, just hold on. The voice didn't respond. Megan's getting help. Still, no response. Megan, are you there? I shouted as best as I could over my shoulder. Megan! She was gone already, and I was alone in here. Or not completely alone, I suppose. Someone was talking to me. I started to turn forward again, but frowned as I sniffed the air behind me. It smelled like pot. Someone was smoking pot back in the cave. Megan, is that you? I heard the hacking cough of a bad inhale, but it was muffled immediately, and then I heard nothing at all. I had to keep going backwards, but it was much more difficult to push back on my belly than pull myself forward, and it was slow going. Kate? The voice came again, and I tried to go faster, but I wouldn't budge. While my butt had slipped under a slight bulge in the ceiling going forward, it wouldn't go under on the way back. I lay still, entombed. Then came the panic. I was hyperventilating, but there wasn't enough room for my chest to expand. I screamed and shook to try to free myself, but I couldn't move an inch in either direction. If that wasn't bad enough, here came the nausea. Hot granola and Gatorade seeped up my throat, but I couldn't even heave enough to puke. And the vomit dribbled from my mouth. Some went into my windpipe, and I coughed, causing the puke to pour into my sinuses. Hot stomach bile and billion bits of sharp granola filled my mouth and nose. I shook and screamed and begged. So this was it. The worst death ever. After a minute, I set my cheek on the cool rock and did my best to calm down. My eyes were locked ahead on the pupil of black that lay beyond the beam of my flashlight, expecting whatever was speaking to me to crawl out of it. Now, I did what any rational person would do in this situation. I started to cry. Oh, and not quietly. Like I fucking cared. I was a metaphor closer to fuck than a fish in a barrel. I was a rat in a trap. I was sobbing in the dark when the walls flickered with a shadow. Something had come out of the dark. Its flesh was translucent, and I saw blue veins run from its throbbing heart. I screamed in terror, and it deftly darted out of the light. I cried even harder. I don't deserve this, I'm a good friend. I sobbed stupidly. I'm a good person. A good person? The voice from the black asked back. Megan said you're evil. It was several seconds before I could respond. M Megan? You know her? Megan is God, said the dark. Suddenly my fear was overtaken by confusion. M Megan? You think Megan Duffy is God? She told us, yes. Whatever was speaking didn't sound very smart. I paused to think. Wh why do you believe her? I'm not evil and I don't know much about anything, but Megan Duffy is not God. She's not? No. No, she's a liar. Hmm. And your friends, Anthony and Jessica, they wouldn't happen to not be evil, too, would they? No. They're great people. They're kind and funny and would do anything to help people. They're not demons who feed on the flesh of the innocent. No! I shouted. 
What are you talking about? Are they here? I'm afraid not. Hmm. Hum, the dark. This is all very bad. You'd better come in. Me? Yes. I I'm stuck. Hmm. Give it time. You will be not stuck. What? I shouted, but there was no response. Several minutes passed in silence, and as I calmed, I began to wonder if I'd hallucinated the whole thing. But sure enough, once I'd blown the granola and vomit from my nose, and relaxed some, I was able to move forward again. There was something benevolent in that voice, and I was painfully aware that if whatever this thing was wanted to kill me, I'd most certainly be dead already. I reached the end of the tunnel, where there was another hole only larger. I shined my light through, and my heart drummed as I saw a dozen of those crystalline creatures throw up their hands. No light! They hissed and whispered. No light! I pointed my flashlight at the ground, but still it shone enough so I could see their legs. It took a while for me to recover enough to talk. How do you know my name? Megan. And how the hell do you know her? The figure with the deeper voice that had spoken to me the first time stepped forward to the edge of the light. We were hunting in the woods. We thought she was dead. I was beginning to get the picture as strange as it was. Dead? Was she passed out drunk or something and when she woke up she told you she was a god? Yes. So that you wouldn't kill her? We only hunt small things. We leave humans alone. Why was she scared then? Dead humans are okay. We almost ate. I widened my eyes. How do you know Anthony and Jessica? What did Megan tell you about them? The creatures were silent. Evil humans are also okay. To eat? Yes. So Megan told you that Jessica and Anthony were evil? Oh yes. She said they were devils. And you took them from their homes? Megan brought them to us like she brought you. Megan had used these things to kill any Jessica and Anthony. And almost me. But why? I was sick but thankfully didn't feel like I had anything left to expel. Jessica and Anthony are not devils. They were good people. The creatures shuffled awkwardly on their feet. She tricked us, this Megan. Yeah, she tricked you. So, this Megan. She is a devil. You could say so. If we ate her, would she taste like those other two? I frowned. Probably. There was an excited chatter amongst them. We can eat Megan! No! I held out my hands. No eating anybody, okay? I have to figure out why she did this. My voice was cracking as I began to cry. I need to know why she killed my friends. We're sorry, Kate. We were tricked. They all murmured in agreement. I'm going to go back. Please don't tell anyone we are here. They will kill us. Who will? Everybody. I nodded. What are you, anyway? Are you humans of some kind? We were trapped in the dark and our fathers chose to stay here. Plenty of fish and bats to eat. Right, okay. I started to shuffle on my knees to turn. Goodbye, Kate. Come back with news of Megan any time. I awkwardly waved. What Megan had done was horrible, but I had to know why. I wasn't sure she deserved to be devoured by those things, but what were the chances that Jessica or Anthony did? 
I thought maybe I'd underestimated her. If Megan was smart enough to save her own life and get these things to kill Jess and Anthony, what else could she do? What was she plotting? But I decided that if those things were telling the truth, and if she led us all to the slaughter, then her fate was sealed. The only reason I would ever crawl back through that godforsaken tunnel a second time was to tell those things just where they could find Megan Duffy. I stormed through the woods back to the old bakery. My hair was a tangled mess, and my arms bled from scraps, and puke stained my shirt. Megan's house was only a few blocks away, and soon I was at the front door. Her parents' cars were gone, and the front door was unlocked. I stepped in and walked towards her bedroom. I didn't need a weapon. If she made a move, I would beat this bitch with my bare hands. I pushed open her bedroom door. On the bed was a violin and a PlayStation. Jess's violin. I doubted there was another violin in this whole town. Her laptop browser was open to eBay and as I bent to look, I heard a gasp behind me and something crashed on the floor. When I turned, Megan was looking at me like I'd returned from the dead. Kate! Uh, I, I was just getting some things ready to head back to the woods. I already called the fire department. I said nothing. I was staring at what she dropped. Is that my fucking jewelry set? She looked down slowly and shrugged. No? I grabbed her hair and violently bent her sideways. I know what you did. Those things told me. You killed them, Megan. I didn't kill anyone. Why? Why did you lead us there? Look, you guys have a lot of shit. I loosened my grip some, partly in disbelief. I already got 400 bucks for the violin alone. I just have to ship it. I'm sorry I led you there, too. But it's like free murder. I'll split it with you. All the money. I already spent the violin money, though, but I got tickets to Avril Lavigne. I'll give you one. I let go of her hair. I don't remember my expression, but I'm sure it was aghast. You murdered two people. Almost three. To pay for tickets to see Avril Lavigne? They're front row, Megan fired back. Crawling through the tunnel the second time was much easier. Instead of staying at the entrance to the creature's lair, I climbed down into it. Hello? I kept the flashlight shining at my feet so I could still see their shadows. Gade! said my friend in surprise, stepping forward, and the others all whispered my name behind him excitedly. Do you guys paint? I made drawing motions with my hand. I have something to show you. Paint? Yes. They handed me a flat dimpled stone with some kind of ochre paste on it. I set the flashlight against the wall and began to draw the neighborhood. They sat cross-legged in front of me, and I proceeded to give some kind of primitive PowerPoint on how to find, capture, and kill Megan Duffy. And no, I don't feel bad about it. And Megan, she will taste good, they hissed. Oh yes. I pictured Megan scream singing to Avril Lavigne, and I smiled. That backstabbing bitch will be delicious.